message short Hello Mona I reach through mysterious ceilings My only hope I look for the things I don't know Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know because I am working through um, some aligners right now. I'm on my fifth tray, so it's been a long process so far and it's still a long way to go. I wanted to say thank you so much for being here and coming back and clicking on this video. It's been a while. It's been um, maybe two months now since I've wanted to paint, wanted to do anything creative. I've been going through a lot of mental health struggles lately and I talk about this a little bit in the next vlog that I plan to come out for October but I have a lot of new things that I am doing. I just came back from my new ceramics class. I had my first class this week and it was super fun and I was really excited um, meeting everybody and getting started and and overall, I'm just really hopeful um, that this is going to be something that reunites the creativity back inside of me. <laughs> I also would like to say that I probably will not be making that sketchbook tour this month, and I won't be able to do that quarterly check-in this month, um, just because, I, again, I, I didn't really do anything for the past two months. And that pretty much set me back and i'm trying not to dwell on it because that was a break that i didn't need most of the time when i do take breaks i feel really bad because i feel like i wasted time but that time that i took away from the art community i guess really cemented the fact that i do enjoy what i do and being an artist helps with my depression a lot more than i thought and the more that I put aside making art and posting it and sharing everything with you guys, the more, I guess, ungrounded I felt and the less motivated I felt. And I started questioning why I was even doing this stuff. I really struggle with that, like figuring out what my purpose is and like why I am doing the things that I'm doing. When I was distancing myself from the artist community because I 
didn't feel like I could be a part of it if I wasn't creating anymore. I fell into a more deeper depression and I guess I struggled a lot more too because I wasn't a part of that community anymore. I'm realizing how important it is for me to be able to be creative and pursue those creative hobbies. I am doing a lot better and I am back. I do plan to make more paint with me videos as I try to finish up the sketchbook in time for maybe a sketchbook tour next month. The reason why I decided to paint these figs is because I do have a painting in my mind that I want to do that features figs. The best way to kind of get back into a thing and also, you know, use my sketchbook and, and help complete my sketchbook for the month would be to practice some fig paintings and gouache. I'm also in the process of revamping my gouache palette and really focusing on some primary colors that I only want to use, you know, having a solid color palette to go with my solid theme of my art. So that's been a process and this painting was a little bit of an experiment using my watercolors but also primarily just using my gouache and seeing what colors I could create and I'm very proud of the purples I was able to get out of the paints that I selected and I will go over more of those paints once I have a more solid idea of what paints I want to keep in the palette and which ones I am okay with leaving behind. So that's something to look forward to in the next art vlog. So when I started painting in my sketchbook, I did have to take a second and remind myself how to paint again and also practicing the techniques that I have started to develop and that makes the painting process a lot easier for me. And one of those things were starting with like the items in the back and then working your way up. Like that's something I totally forgot. And I had to take a step back and remind myself like where I should start. And so I started with the viney bark in the background because everything else is going to just be laying on top of that. And what I did was I used a mix of the brown paints that I have in the palette with a little bit of green and then I slowly added more blue and green to kind of give the, the bark more dimension. I also had to remind myself that the stuff that was behind other things should be a little bit darker because they're casting a shadow on the bark in a way to make things more seem I guess it just makes everything seem more dimensional and less flat if there was some changes in the light and shadow as well and I did use a little bit of blue and green to kind of darken up that brown color that I had for the background. After I was done painting the bark the next step was to paint the leaves so the leaves rested on top of the brown bark and the leaves were actually a lot of fun. I threw in a lot of different colors, different types of greens. I used white, I also used yellow and orange and had a lot of fun. The number one staple in my palette is green. I have a hard time limiting the amount of greens I add in my palette. Greens and blues, those are the two colors that I gravitate to the most and are the hardest for me to decide which ones I'm gonna keep in my palette. But the one green that I used the most was Olive Green by Holbein. It's a gouache color and it comes in their 24 set. I think it comes in most of their sets. The green that I tend to gravitate towards the most and it's going to stay a staple in my new gouache palette. While painting the leaves, uh, one component that I didn't think of until after I was already painting was where the light was coming through and how I was going to illustrate that. And so I kind of took a little bit of a cheating route by just kind of highlighting the ends and the like center of the leaves. But I also threw in a lot of fun colors while painting the leaves too just so I can have some fun with the painting as well and experiment. And that's what a sketchbook is for, but it's also a learning opportunity and something that I can keep in the back of my head while I am doing a final painting or 
if I decide to practice some more, I need to think of, hey, where's the lighting coming from? Because lighting is so important and it's something that I need to work on a lot more in my paintings is deciding where the light is coming from and then making the painting very, I guess, more realistic too when you have proper light and shadow because it gives more three dimension three dimensionality I don't know if I'm saying that right it makes everything look more 3d and it makes things more solid looking when you're doing 2d art when you can master that light and shadow and that's not something I thought about until after I was painting but that's okay because it's in a sketchbook and this is all about learning and I like doing these videos because I can self-reflect a little bit later on and think about what I would have done differently. And I also just like to watch my painting process back to just to see how I decided to make the choices that I did and what colors I used and just kind of enjoy the relaxation of just watching myself paint because I like watching other people paint and it's really relaxing to me and also it keeps me company while I'm painting and for my first time painting figs I think I did a pretty okay job and as I was thinking about this idea and like doing some google searching of figs and what they look like I stumbled upon a very interesting thing so I don't know if you know this, but figs are pollinated by these little wasps that fly into the fig and they pollinate it, but they also lay their eggs and, and do all this kind of creepy weird things with the figs. And the little wasp that pollinates the figs and lays its eggs in it, they're so tiny. When I looked up the pictures of them, their wings had like an iridescent look to them and I had some iridescent shimmer watercolors that I was really excited to use to paint the wings to give them that shimmer and I think overall that's my favorite part of the painting and something that I want to do in the final painting is use those iridescent shimmer watercolors and I'm really excited to bust those out and use them again. I thought it was really cool that their wings like shimmered like that and I'm like ooh I can totally use watercolors to make that happen again. So that was a really exciting part of this painting and something I really look forward to doing. Now that we are coming to a close, I would like to say thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for taking your time and keeping me company and I hope this video kept you company and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye, take care. Can you feel it, honey? Can you feel it, honey? Now you're way past that. All that bad, 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 bad. So bad, 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 bad. Can you see it, honey? Can you see it? See you past the trouble. Now you know the meaning of it all. all, 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 all. It all, 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 all. Did you think it happened so soon? Self, you